Today, we're gonna to compare two of the top cook sets on the market for your Overland camper. Coming up. I'm Drew and this is Evergreen Overland. On this channel, we help overlanders out for themselves for adventure through doing gear reviews, vehicle mount tutorials, and cooking tasty camp meals to share around the fire. Cooking is one of my biggest passions in life and that doesn't stop when I leave the house. Anytime we get to go out camping, I'll always be the one cooking up a feast and sharing it with as many people as I can. Now, I'm not the world's most prestigious chef, I'm always learning, but I feel like I do all right. Although I do have quite a bit of knowledge around preparing food, it always helps to have the proper gear. That's why today we're gonna compare the GSI stainless steel base cam along with the Stanley Adventure Even Heat Camp Pro Cook Set to see which one I prefer and which one might be right for you. Let's start this off by doing a quick unboxing of the Stanley kit. On the back of the box is gonna give you a nice picture of what the kit comes with as well as on the side, how it all gets packed down together. When you open it up, it's really tightly and nicely packaged so it's not gonna get damaged in shipping. You have your little retention bungee to keep everything pinned together. Nice stainless steel lid with drain spouts here. On the underside of the lid, you get kind of a laser etched example of how everything's supposed to pack down together in this kit. In the top, you get this little user's manual, cutting board, the fry pan, secondary smaller sized pot, and at the very bottom, two silicone trivet pot holders. Lastly, getting into the secondary pot here, packed away are a couple of snap together cooking utensils. There's a Stanley kit. Now let's grab the GSI, set them side by side, and start comparing. On my left, we have the GSI, and on the right, we have the Stanley. These are their configurations, fully collapsed and nested together. If you'd like to see the standalone video I did reviewing the GSI base camp, there'll be a link above right now. While the GSI uses kind of a more common stuff sack with a drawstring on it. The Stanley uses this kind of bungee system to pin the lid down to the handles, keeping everything together. I'm gonna do a quick shakedown noise test, grabbing these things by the side and shaking them just to give you an idea of how much movement there is when they're packed up in their base configuration. Obviously the GSI was quite a bit louder. Let's open this up really quick. There's that GSI stuff sack. I always appreciate a bonus stuff sack. So both of these units nest together in a pretty comparable footprint. The Stanley has a large pot lid here as the outside component keeping it all together while the Stanley uses the fry pan to do similar things. This bungee definitely pins this lid down really tight. Surprisingly, this stuff sack does a really good job of pinning this fry pan to the base of this really tight. And that noise I was getting from the shake test was more so from the interior and not necessarily the pan jumping up and down off of the bottom pot. The GSI measures 9.6 inches wide by just over seven inches tall if you include a little bit of wiggle room for the stuff sack and total weighs in at 3.7 pounds. The outside edges of the Stanley's permanently affixed handles measure 11.5 inches side to side but if you're taking the measurement on the non-handle side it's just over nine and a quarter inches with a height of just under the GSI probably by a quarter in. So probably like six and three quarters or something like that. That. Now the Stanley kit does weigh significantly more than the GSI measuring seven pounds, two ounces. Both kits include two different sizes of pots, one frying pan, and lids that have venting holes as well as strainer holes for draining off any excess liquid in anything you might be cooking. Now on the Stanley side, I've been using its little brother for a long time. I think it's called the Adventure Full Kitchen Cook Set. You can find a link to the video I did reviewing that item right here. While I'm at it, if you guys wanna see a side-by-side -side comparison video of the two different Stanley cook sets, definitely throw a comment in the comment section below and let me know that. And I've loved that cook set, but my buddy had this model that I cooked with last time we went out, and I thought it was just cool enough to buy for myself and give you guys a side-by-side -side review. Both sets can be washed in the dishwasher, although we're not gonna be using a dishwasher out on the trail. Both use the same style of stainless steel as well as silicone in different ways to help insulate from some of the heat while cooking. Now we're gonna dive into what's different. If we take a look at the lids, they're actually pretty similar construction. On the underside of the Stanley lid, it has an etched-in design showing you exactly how this whole kit is supposed to stack together, which is kind of cool. That GSI doesn't have that same laser etching, but it isn't all that complicated to figure out how they go together. And what's cool about the GSI is the handles on everything, as well as the lids, incorporate the silicone padding to help insulate from the heat and keep you from burning yourself. How Stanley insulates from some of the heat is giving you these two accessory silicone trivets that you can use in handling any of the hot stuff. A little different in how you'd use them in your cooking system, but at the end of the day, it stops you from burning yourself. If you take a look at both the fry pans, you can see that the GSI at nine inches is a half inch larger than the Stanley model. But I would say the Stanley model has probably a quarter inch more depth 
than the GSI. Flipping the frying pans over, you can see a slight difference in the thickness of the bases. And while the GSI is a two piece laminated base with an extra thick piece of stainless steel uh, laminated to the bottom of it here, the Stanley Even Heat Pro is probably three times the thickness. And the way that this fry pan base works to give you really even cooking heat is a three layered system where it's stainless steel sandwiched around a sheet of aluminum in the center. Pretty dang cool there. When you look at the handles, both of them have slightly different mechanisms for locking it. The Stanley is a slide mechanism that slides all the way out or all the way in to lock it. And the GSI actually has a little lock that you flip over to release it. Make sure when you are using these that you remember to lock in your handles. It's really bad to be cooking eggs or something and then all of a sudden your pan wants to collapse on you. That's happened to me before. It's a significant bummer. Again, the GSI has that incorporated silicone handle. Thanks for watching this video so far. If you're liking it and getting something out of it, definitely hit that subscribe button to be notified when I put out new videos. Moving along to the larger stock pot that these things come with. Pretty similar in function, although the GSI does have the silicone incorporated pads and handle, which is kind of cool. Again, you just use the little rubber trivet for accessing the pan or you build up some good calluses. Both pots are pretty similar in their capacity. The Stanley holds a maximum capacity of four 4.5 liters, while the GSI can hold a maximum capacity of five liters. Both have the volume graduation stamped into the sides of the pans. The GSI has one, two, three, and four liter, while the Stanley only has one and three liter. The handle construction is a little bit different. Obviously the GSI has the silicone incorporated. These ones flip up into place. In addition, the Stanley uses spot welds to secure the handle to the side of the pot, while the GSI uses a metal rivet. Stanley might be a little bit easier to clean because of that, but I think that the rivets might last longer over the life of the thing. But we won't know that for a long time. While these two pots are said to have the same grade of stainless steel. I would say that the GSI is just a little bit thinner on the edges than the Stanley. And the Stanley has this nice little molded lip here that I think builds some structural integrity into it. While the base of the GSI seems to be the same thickness as the walls and gives you a nice little ting, the Stanley incorporates that even heat technology, sandwiching that aluminum in between the two sections of stainless and just gives you a very solid base with very little tinging in comparison. All right, now we come to the secondary pots and we see quite a bit of difference between these two. Both have similar lids and attributes to the larger pots, but the differences really start to compound from there. The GSI has a volume maximum of three liters and gives you that multi-stage gradation stamped into the side. While the Stanley has a capacity of 1.8 liters and you miss out on any of that uh, volume gradation stamped into the edges. The handles on these secondary pots are drastically different. The GSI uses similar handles that pop up into place, coated in that heat safe silicone for its handles. While the Stanley shares a similar handle and locking mechanism to the kit's fry pan. Again, similar sidewall thickness I'm seeing in this pot to its larger cousin, as well as similar sidewall thickness that I'm seeing in this pot to its larger cousin. Flipping it over to the base, you get that same Even Heat Pro bottom on the Stanley and same kind of thin pinging sounding base on the GSI. Finally, we're gonna talk about just some of the additional components you get with the Stanley kit. The Stanley says it's an 11 piece kit, while the GSI says it's a seven piece kit. So you get a couple of bonus accessories with the Stanley kit. First off, you're gonna notice this little uh, folding cutting board that comes with the Stanley kit. I haven't used this yet. I don't know if it's going to kind of settle out as you wear it in. My gut tells me it will, and it'll sit flat, become a little bit more flexible. I'm hoping it does settle out after getting a little bit more flexible with use, but I like having another additional cutting board. Secondly, you get the dual trivets and it is kind of cool. It gives you an additional ability to throw this down on a surface that might not be heat safe. This would give you a little bit of insulation on the bottom of the pan when you're setting it down somewhere, which is cool. I actually like these trivets and I really like that the set came with two. Now the last accessory you get in the Stanley kit is these clip together cooking utensils. You get a spoon and a spatula. These things are surprisingly sturdy. They go together really well with a really nice secure clip and overall they're pretty rugged and well designed. So I don't know how well this is going to come across on the camera conveying the quality differences between the two cooking systems as they cook, but we're going to give it a shot here. I'm going to throw these on there, see how long it takes for the heat to transfer and see how evenly the heat is distributed across the bottom of these pans using the thermal gun. What you're going to hear immediately is this guy, once it gets heated up, it's going to pop. This one is already at 200 degrees and it's starting to scorch. I turned them both off. It's kind of already deformed. There's a big divot right there. I'll probably be able to pop it out. 
So the GSI, I'm gonna recommend that you get whatever you're putting in the pot in there almost immediately so that it starts transferring that heat to the actual food itself, giving it a place to go. Cause the steel's just a little too thin of a gauge to sit on that heat without anything in it for any extended amount of time. Fire this guy up independently. You can just totally feel the difference in this thing and that it's evenly distributing the heat around the pot itself. Go ahead and put a little bit of oil in there. It's just really evenly heating across the whole base of the pan. This guy fired up similarly with some oil in it. Watch out for it popping. And let's get some onions sauteing in the pans. You definitely are gonna see the heat transferring through this pan into the onions, and these onions are gonna cook faster on this side because this pan is just more evenly distributing the heat across the base and uh, just kind of slowly tapering up the temperature on the onions in the pan rather than kind of just immediately starting to put the heat to it. And initially you might think that, yeah, these onions cooking faster is gonna be a good thing. You're gonna eat dinner sooner, but, but what you really want in your cooking to make it super consistent is being able to control your temperatures as much as possible. And so far, this guy is just sweating these onions out really, really nice. This guy's got some little brown bits starting to form on it while all of these onions are just cooking super consistently. This isn't a bad pot, but you're just gonna have to mess with the heat up and down quite a bit more when you're cooking. And that's fine if you're spending all of your time kind of just in a one pot meal sort of situation. But to be honest, if you got a lot of different things going on and you're trying to do multiple things at the same time, Stanley, from what I'm seeing, is just gonna give you a lot more controlled cooking parameters than the GSI is going to right now. Okay, we're gonna test these pans out side by side the best way I know how, cooking an egg. And uh, yeah, you can see the difference in the thickness. GSI does have an extra layer in the bottom to help with the even cooking of everything. The Stanley definitely is a thicker base, but I don't know if it's really gonna make a difference in the overall cooking. Let's find out. All right, well, the GSI is definitely taking a little bit longer to heat up than the pot did in the same line. Heating up definitely more evenly with that additional layered thickness base, which I thought it would. The Stanley is, um, heating up pretty evenly too. And just putting my hand in there, I mean, I can definitely tell that the GSI is hotter. Yeah, we're ready to start cooking there. Go ahead and get some oil in these so they don't want to scorch. I don't think I used enough oil on eating one of these to attempt a uh, hand flip, but I'm just gonna flip these guys over. Pretty similar, I'm not winning any awards for egg cookings here. I will say that I did pre-season my GSI pan the first review I did on it, and I have not done that yet on the Stanley pan. So realistically, this probably will have a better surface once I season it. That's my bad, but let's go ahead. I do a fair amount of flipping. Let's go ahead and flip the GSI. Overall, if I'm being honest with myself, I think I like the handle design on the GSI more than the Stanley. I really do like that it has the insulated silicone here. I like the wider base to it, and I like this locking mechanism just a little bit more with the Stanley. The Stanley, when you're throwing it around, it kind of wants to slide around on you just a little bit. See, it pops back a little bit. It really needs to have some sort of stopper that's gonna keep it locked forward like the GSI does. But overall, both of them operate pretty dang well. Both of these kits are are awesome kind of completely rounded out cook kits for any overlander to own. At the time of shooting this video, the GSI Base Camp comes in right about $100, and the Stanley Adventure Even Heat Pro Cook Set comes in at $140. Although I bought my unit at $106 on Amazon when it was on sale, I would recommend that you sign up for both GSI and Stanley's mailers. They have a lot of cool gear, a lot of sales throughout the year, so from what I'm seeing, you can find both of these pieces on sale from time to time. Now I do have to give the leg up on the fry pans to the GSI. It's got a longer handle, heat safe coating, better locking mechanism, and I do like the extra inch in diameter of the fry pan. Well, I really do like all of the incorporated silicone heat resistant components of the GSI kit. Although it weighs in at just under double the weight of the GSI kit, I have to throw my endorsement behind the Stanley Even Heat Pro Cook Set. The fact that this kit comes with the additional accessories, the cutting board and all that stuff uh, is awesome, but I think what they do best is actually insulate the different components metal on metal so that you're not 
getting a lot of movement around there and it just doesn't make as much of a racket going down the road. Not that big a deal for me because all of my gear is in the back of my truck bed so I can't really hear it anyway from the cab, but from somebody in a 4Runner or any other SUV, this would make a gigantic difference in comparison to the noise that this guy would make. This one folded up together in the right way is gonna make a very minimal amount of noise going down the road. And above and beyond, the most significant reason this guy gets the nod from me is the three ply even heat technology that every one of the cooking pots and pans in this kit has incorporated into the base. It just gives you such a more even heat over the bottom of your pan, giving you such a more premium cooking experience. I really do love cooking with it and it's just as good as some of the stuff I have in my pantry at home. The only thing I'd really notice to make this kit even better is take a look at maybe a lay flat lid so this has a little bit less of a footprint and uh, this guy on my other pot my full kitchen setup from them got a little bashed around because it just it protrudes so I jammed it somewhere and it kind of deformed it still works fine but I kind of like the idea of a lay flat lid like their secondary pot has in here myself and honestly I like the GSI kit quite a bit I think this is worth the additional 40 bucks if you have to spend it this GSI kit has some really cool attributes to it I just think they need to take a look and uh, take a page out of the Stanley book, just increase their thickness on the sides a little bit, as well as thickening up the base on both the pots. Hey, I hope this video helped you out. I hope it guided you in the direction you're gonna go to buy your camp cook set. Um, if you like the video, please let me know so by hitting that like button, mash that subscribe button to be notified when I put out a new video. Definitely throw a comment in the comment section below. I love interacting with you guys and kind of building out this community and bouncing things back and forth. If you wanna follow me on other platforms, you can follow me over on Instagram at Evergreen Overland, as well as evergreenoverland.com. Definitely head over to evergreenoverland.com, fill out the contact form, give me your email address. Eventually I'm gonna be partnering with different brands to give you guys exclusive deals, but don't know when that's gonna be happening in the grand scheme of when this video comes out, so it would be nice to have your email on file for when those opportunities do come available. There will be links down in the description section of this email over to Amazon to purchase these items. If you do click my links over to Amazon, it helps me out drastically gives me a little bit of a bump, but I can afford to buy different pieces of kit and give you guys honest reviews on them in the future. I hope you get a chance to get out this summer, cook up some really good food, and enjoy it with your family around the campfire. Thanks for watching.